look at what the storm blew in. Literally, it is so crazy rainy outside. Uh, we just got back from running some errands, getting some groceries. We went to our local food co-op, did some homeschooling there. So happy end of spring break. We are back to doing school and my grocery bag completely busted out. <laughs> but hi, how are you? I'm glad you're here. Why don't you spend a cozy day with us? We're just gonna do some stuff around the house. I think I'm gonna start some seeds for my garden. We shall see what I get to. Right now, I kinda need to unload these groceries. So, the plan for dinner tonight is homemade pizzas. And so we picked up some, look at these cool heirloom tomatoes. This one is like dark black. This one is really pretty too. Um, hey, could you get the little colander out that's underneath the sink? We need to rinse off our uh, produce, even though it is organic. Those in there, we got some garlic, some arugula. They have a bulk food section, and so I got some local wildflower honey. This has been one of the only things that helps our allergies. I mean, it has to be like as local as you can get. So I got some of that. I also picked up some of this bulk tea. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. It's a lemon ginger tea make that's locally smell. made. Smell it again. Oh, make them smell. Ah, oh, I wish we had smell a vision. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I'll have to make some of that while we watch the rain come down. We were hearing some thunder rumbles on our way home. I thought to brighten up our stormy day, I would get some fresh tulips grown in the Skagit Valley. These are grown locally um, into our vase at the table. That's pretty much it. We mostly go to the co-op to have a fun spot to do some schoolwork. We get some breakfast there. We usually go about once a week. And I thought that's how we would come back to homeschooling after our spring break. I got from Amazon, you guys. Our honey dipper. I got a honey dipper top for our uh, mason jar, which, oh, I need to put this into a regular mouth mason jar, but the honey dipper goes into it. Let me see if I can find a regular mouth mason jar. <laughs> if I wasn't allergic to bees, like deathly allergic to bees, I would definitely consider beekeeping. All washed up, we have our regular mouth mason jar, and then this just goes down into it. Don't do it. See, like that. Ooh, I might not even just. Put, <gasps> yeah, see? So cool. Is that so cool? We can have honey with our tea. I'll go put this over here. Do you have stuff that you need to do before you can have your screen time? Yeah. Have you taken your garbage out yet? No. Okay. Maybe we should do that. So there's my very chaotic grocery haul <laughs> for the day. On to other stuff. Don't put the bag on your head. Man, it is so stinking rainy out there. Did you guys see my last video that I posted before this one? If you didn't, I will have it linked in the description box for you guys to go check out because I shared this whole project. We cleared a bunch of space behind the garden that we built last year. We added a chicken coop. Yes, we're getting chickens. I'm so excited about that. That's probably uh, three or four weeks from now um, from when I'm filming this video. Um, and then we have this little arch here that needs to actually be installed. It's just kind of sitting there right now, but we're gonna turn that into to our garden gate. And I have these garden beds out here that are just begging for starts to be put in them when it gets a little less soggy and cold outside, which is part of what I'm going to work on today. I've got this little indoor greenhouse right here. I've got some seeds here as well. I have more than just what's here. Um, and I'm not gonna start all of these uh, for this session of seed starting, um, but I am going to get some things taken care of. Oh, there's Liam. Throw in the garbage away. Before the kids can have screen time, um, we love Minecraft here, uh, but before they can do that, they have to finish their school for the day. Um, oh, look, there's a birdie. I have to show you. Oh, and he's calling to his mate. Look at that sweet little birdie on our bird feeder. Sorry. 
a happy interruption. Look at how sweet, oh my gosh. We installed this clear little bird feeder there a couple of months ago and at first the birds were too shy to come up to it, um, especially because they could see in our house and they could see us here, but they've become more and more bold. And now I can stand here, as you saw, and birds will just come up and eat from it. It makes me feel like a Disney princess. I'll link this little bird feeder in the description box for you guys if you wanna check it out. Uh, but what was I saying? Um, oh, the kids have their screen time, they've done their chores, they're reading, their school, they've cleaned their rooms, so they can have a bit of time there. And while they do that, I am going to try to get some things set up for seed starting. I've never done this before, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I have this tote here, full of stuff that I bought last year because I was so excited to start seeds. In typical ADHD fashion, <laughs> I was more excited about the process of acquiring the supplies than actually doing the work. And then once I got to doing that, our bathroom flooded and we ended up dealing with like a remodeling thing and this just kind of got pushed to the wayside. But it's definitely still something that I would like to do. Thank goodness, I have my mom on speed dial and she has done this for years. I have a bunch of stuff that I purchased on her recommendation and at this point I don't even know what I'm looking at. So enjoy some montage music of me sitting here scratching my head trying to figure this out and maybe, maybe I'll be able to put something together here. I, I don't know. We interrupt the seed starting to show you a steamy spring day. Just like that, it is all of a sudden a very sunny day. It was literally snowing this morning. What the heck? Hey Siri. Call mom. Hello. Hi mama. Do you have a minute? Hey honey. Okay. I just opened up my tote that I packed everything away in last year for seed starting that I, I literally never used any of this stuff. And okay. I, I could use help figuring out what is what, what and what I, <laughs> what I start with. <laughs> I know this sounds so lame. I just feel like I bought a bunch of stuff and now I don't know what the heck I'm looking at anymore. Oh, look at your starts. Okay, yeah, look at them. They're, they're going above the lap. The That's light. amazing. Raised up. So you put the one with the grid into one that's solid. Yes. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is so helpful. Grid, solid, heat mat. Okay, heat mat, and then the solid one. Okay. With the grid. Are you hearing me? Yes, I am. As soon as you get these little sprouts. Yeah. You you turn off the heat. Okay. You have these lights here. Um. Let me see. These are the lights I have. Do you see my video? Are those the blue, blue, red ones? They're the ones that you linked for me, so. If... Blue, red will work too. Okay. You don't want to turn those on until you get, until you see the little green shootsies. Okay. Okay. Shootsies. You want to have your lights as low as possible okay. to your plants. Okay. Otherwise, they will have to stretch up and get, they'll get really leggy. Okay. One okay. other thing. Yeah. Don't water on the top. Okay. Pull your little thing out and, and fill it with water. In in the thing, okay. Because they'll get like mildewy? Mold, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. They will get mold. Okay, don't water from top. Oh, 
thank goodness for my mama. She really helped so much with just clarifying some things, helping me formulate a plan, helping me figure out what I want to start. And so I'm going to resume that project a little later on. I realized it's getting a bit late and I need to start our pizza dough. So I'm gonna do that right now so it can rise and we'll be ready for us to make our little pizzas tonight. I'm gonna use my sourdough starter for that. How's this for a cozy Ma Ingalls day? Starting my seeds for my garden, making sourdough. I'm in my dress era, apparently. Living my best life, okay. Uh, where's that recipe? I suppose if I was really Ma Ingalls, I would put an apron on, but I am the worst at remembering to wear an apron. <laughs> that will be covered, completely covered in food and flour and go, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> The chaos continues. It's been a couple of hours since I last picked up the camera, but I've been on the phone with Weston and the insurance company. Weston hurt his finger. He's been limping it along for a while in typical dude fashion, and now he's finally at urgent care to get it taken care of and looked at or something. And in that time, I forgot about my pizza dough, which completely overproofed and the oil was spilling outside of the bowl. I've totally abandoned my seed starting project. Apparently his tendon pulled off of his bone. Ow, that sounds so painful. What's a tendon? Okay, Weston's on his way home from urgent care, but I don't really know what the update is or the plan of action. He said, I'll tell you when I get home. So we're gonna have that conversation when he gets here. He is driving one-handed right now because he's got a splinted finger. I suppose that's better than his typical no hands driving. Why am I throwing shade to an injured man? Natalie, stop it. I'm gonna call the kids out here, which apparently they found a whistle. We're gonna assemble these pizzas. I've got the crusts par-baked and I've got meat and cheese on this little platter. I've got some veggies on this platter. We've got the arugula there that can just stay in its own container, but this makes it easier for them to grab what they want. And we're gonna put these pizzas together. I think there's four, four pizzas. The way my kids are eating these days, I would not be surprised if they gobbled up every bite. Hello? Why are you holding everything with the hand that's hurt? I'm not using the hand, I'm using the wrist. Babe. Tendon, instead of the tendon breaking, it pulled the bone off the tendon. <laughs> that's nice. We're making pizza. For so your, is your bone broken? No, it just pulled a piece of the bone off. Oh. Yeah. And my hands literally hurt just hearing you say yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, babe. Mom, look, I'm making a little person. Well, Weston got home, but then skedaddled right back out the door because I forgot it's youth group night tonight and he's feeling well enough to go. I think he might be giving the message tonight. So he's out the door. He quickly said something about a tendon pulled away from the bone in his hand. He's been referred to an orthopedic surgeon, but with the splint, they're gonna give it a week, I think he said, to see if it maybe resolves on its own, but they're not hopeful. So that's the update for now. Pizza is made. I'm gonna sit down with the kids and we're going to have a little movie night. I think it's, we're, did we decide on the court jester with Danny Kay? We use youth group nights when Weston is gone as the time to watch cheesy old movies. Weston's not really into that sort of a thing, but we are, so we're seizing the day. I don't know if you can see from here, but there is a bird. Oh, there's two now. 
It looks like they're bathing in the bird seed. I've never seen that before. Anyway, hello. It's a new day. I'm actually not feeling so great today, both physically and emotionally. Um, last night I was up for a while with an abdominal migraine and sleep deprivation definitely doesn't help with emotional or mental health. Um, and emotionally, of course, things are still very raw and fresh with the loss of my niece, which I talked about in last week's video um, and also over on my Instagram. But we're just taking it one day at a time and some days are better than others. And today just doesn't really feel like one of those days. It, it kind of feels like it's gonna swallow me whole and I'm just, it's everything I can do to just keep it together. Um, but taking it one day at a time and honestly being able to take care of my own little family and our home and work outside, it's, it's been so helpful to have things to do to occupy my hands and my mind. So I wanted to thank you guys again. I've, I've been reading through the comments of last week's video and just the support and the love that you're continuing to show is just incredible. And also it's just incredible to see how many people have experienced loss uh, in, in all sorts of forms, um, but especially the loss of a child. It's just, it's something that no one should ever have to go through and I would never wish it on anyone. But knowing that we're not alone in uh, the pain that we're feeling with the loss of my niece is, it's very, very comforting. And so I wanna thank you guys so much for that. And honestly, having um, an opportunity to be creative and to make videos and to edit and to shoot and just all of that has been just so wonderful and it's been so soothing to be able to put into like an art form or a video form um, this experience even though there are elements of it that are quite sad and um, it's just it's been a very cathartic sort of experience to exercise skills and talents to be able to to put these videos together. It's honestly why I started my YouTube channel in the first place over nine years ago was to give myself a creative outlet, number one. I was stuck at home on bed rest with uh, early pregnancy with my twin boys, and so I decided to just use the footage that I already had and document my whole pregnancy. And the second reason why I started my YouTube channel was to create community, and oh man, did those two pursuits ever come to fruition? That and so much more. And I'm just, I'm feeling very grateful at the same time of feeling overwhelmed and, um, and going through grief and all of that. It's just a, a big mix of emotions. So today, I think the project that I'm going to be working on is um, just working on this seed starting situation. It feels like I, I'll start and then I keep getting interrupted, but I do realize it's one of those things that is kind of ongoing. It's not like I'm gonna start and then finish it. It's gonna be one of those things that I have sort of a swapping in and out and a rotation um, as I bring things out to the garden and start new things for you know a different time in our season. That's just the nature of it. And so I, I am not striving for perfection here because uh, I don't actually think there is a perfect way to do it. I'm looking to make some progress. And so if you're going through something tough right now, uh, whether it's a loss or financial struggles, or uh, maybe your husband pulled a tendon off of the bone of his finger, you know, whatever it is, big or small, God sees it all. Uh, he doesn't waste a single ounce of pain or tear that we shed. And I want you to know that you're not alone. Um, we're all in this together. So I hope you're encouraged um, and I'm going to get to work here just getting some stuff put together for this little growing little greenhouse that I have in here to hopefully get this kickstart on my garden, finally. Could I believe in what my eyes could not see? Or has the antidote to brokenness evaded me? Could I believe in what my ears have not heard? Or will the suffering that surrounds me have the final word? Even on the darkest nights I know the sun will rise. I will trust the promise I cannot see with my eyes. Even when the clouds surround, I know the sun still. 
still shines But when will it break through? Jesus, I need you healing balm creating and sowing new life is during a time of loss. The Lord has just been ministering to my heart so much during this project. It's taken me a few days. It might not be recognizable after editing this video, but I've just been plugging away little by little at this project. One day I hung the lights, the other I planned out what I was going to be planting, another I did the planting, um, and it's all really coming together. And I'm so happy with how this little indoor greenhouse has turned out. Let me show you what I have going on in here. The lights are off for now um, because we haven't had anything sprout yet. That's what these heat mats are for underneath here. I'm learning so much from my mom and I am so grateful for her help. Um, but these will be turned on once we get those little green sprouts shooting up. So I have Black Beauty zucchini, some cilantro. I'm actually starting beets. This is off the recommendation of MI Gardener, um, and my mom has been trying this method with good results so far. So I'm trying it out too. We've got little snack, like they're called muncher cucumbers. Those will be fun. We've got a couple of varieties of sunflowers. And then this is my tomato and peppers and peas. So we've got some heirloom cherry tomatoes, heirloom Cherokee purple tomatoes. These are super cool looking. And then we have a heirloom rainbow blend of tomatoes. We have some peppers, Cubanelle, Chocolate Beauty, and then we have cayenne hot pepper. And then I did six starts of snow peas. These are called the mammoth melting snow peas. Um, we eat tons of peas and that's a really good piece of advice is when you're just starting out, be sure to just grow the stuff that you know you're gonna eat. I know we'll eat snow peas. We eat a ton of zucchini. We love beets and cucumbers. Uh, sunflowers, of course, are beautiful and maybe we'll get some seeds out of those. And then my boys are obsessed with tomatoes. Years ago, when it was just me and Weston, I had like a little patio garden and I wanted to grow tomatoes because I thought they would look cool, but they ended up rotting on the vine because only I really eat tomatoes. Weston doesn't like them. <laughs> so that was a total waste back then, but lesson learned. But it's a new season of life and we have new people in our family who love tomatoes. So that's why I have a few of them growing there. And then once those little sprouts come up, let me show you how the lights work. So you just click on these little switches and they turn on. I rigged up um, popsicle sticks or like these are bigger like tongue depression sticks with hot glue and I literally like stuck them to the panels in here because this top opens so I couldn't hang these lights from the roof <laughs> and it looks kind of janky but it's working and I just use what I had so hopefully this will all work out. I showed this to my mom. I sent her a little video chat and she said it was looking good. So I'll turn those lights off for now, let the heat mats do their thing. I'm gonna close the doors to keep everything nice and snug and warm and a bit humid in there so that the little seeds can germinate and start to sprout up. I was actually doing the math on a lot of these varieties and how long it takes for the seed to sprout. And I have a feeling that those little first shoots of green are gonna show when we're out of town. Uh, I think I'm gonna have my mom come over. We're only gone for a few days and I'll give them a good water before we leave, but I think I'll have her do a little bit of babysitting for me if she's able, um, just to make sure that they don't dry out. But I might come home from our little trip. We're actually going, taking a little road trip to California for a couple of days. We might come home to nice little green shoots there to welcome us. That would be so exciting. So right now I have just one more thing that I would like to do. Well, actually maybe two. First of all, I need to refill our bird feeder that's hanging up by the garden. That's one thing that I need to do. 
but I would also like to plant these forget-me-not flowers. I was actually sharing this in a video a few weeks ago where I wanted to plant these forget-me-not flowers in memory of my grandma and grandpa, and that was actually before all of this happened with my sister and her baby. And so now I will also be planting these in memory of sweet baby Amelia. I'll believe in what my eyes can't see and I will trust you, Lord. I will trust you, Lord. I will make a sacrifice of praise and say that you are good. Yeah, you are so fun to see this corner of our property evolve over time this time last year it was a crazy wild raw overgrown spot um, that had so many invasive weeds in it there weren't any real flowering plants or anything for pollinators and now we've been able to just totally transform it with building this little garden last year which the fence that we put in last year and everything it's really holding up we would eventually like to get something a little bit more permanent and nice looking but you know this little wire fence with the t posts it's working just fine but that arbor that i have that i got in last week's video is just inspiring me to continue to like work on the aesthetics and um, as my dad would say gingerbread it up just cutesify it and, and make it a place where i just i'm really looking forward to being out there and working that's advice that jess from roots and refuge always gives is to make your garden space a spot that you look forward to being in and it, and it looks nice and it's it's a pretty place for you to sit and rest as well as work in and so that's what i'm going to continue to work on we've got buds here on the lilac tree that survived its big transplant in the fall last year. Got airplanes flying overhead. You know, it's a sunny day when those little personal biplanes start flying around. It's just, just a gorgeous day. And it's about to get even better because when I say goodbye to you guys, we're gonna leave and go on a coffee date with my mom. That's gonna be very nice. So I hope you're enjoying more uh, gardening content on my channel in the last couple of weeks. I intend to continue it as I work on stuff here and there. I'm so glad you guys joined me for this video. Thank you so much for spending a little part of your day here with me on my channel and I'll catch you later.